Okay, so I am going to be presenting on the Rainbow Crack, and my name is Colin Meany. So, first thing is, what is Rainbow Crack? Well, Rainbow Crack is an instant Windows password cracker based off Felipe Oshlin's, I don't know how to say that, but uh, faster time memory trade-off technique. You basically, you give it a hash or a rainbow table, and there's a couple other things you can, you can give to it or parameters you can set on it and it gives you back the plain text before it was hashed. So it, it solves you you basically you you come up with some uh, like you use a standard hashing algorithm like in my example I'm gonna be using MD5 hashes and you hash stuff and then save it in a table and then try the hashes. Or you you use the hashes to come up with the plain text back. So brute okay. So the difference between this and a brute force attack is that the brute force attack does the hashes as it runs. So basically, every time you run the brute force attack, it's going to take your list of words or letters or numbers or whatever it is and like say you put one two three four five, it's gonna take that, it's gonna hash it, and it's going to try that hash, and it's gonna do that for every single thing you do. Or if you do it, if you're, it, I guess it depends on what what part of the of Rainbow Crack you're using, because as I'll explain in the next slide, there are different different things uh, the Rainbow Crack can do. But um, or you can take the hashes and give give it a list of hashes which you can provide it a list, a file, and that is okay. Uh, but given that, it generates the plain text until you figure out which one it is, which one you want. So it'll do that every time as well. Rainbow tables are better because basically what they do is they, they hash everything right away. So if you want to type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, hello, goodbye, whatever, and like you have a big list, it's gonna put all those into a table and say those are matched up with the hash A B C D E F G one two three four five six seven eight nine you know whatever they're they're really long. So rainbow tables are much better because they save you a lot of time in the long run if you're gonna use it like more than once. If, I guess if you're only gonna use it once, then the brute force is faster. But if you want to use it on more than one hash, then or more than one time, then the rainbow table is going to always be better. Because it's it's nearly nearly instantaneous as soon as you try to run the uh, run it from the rainbow table. But when like just creating the rainbow table, which is basically the same thing that the brute force does, took several hours. The online it said it would take around two to seven hours. Didn't take me. It probably took me like an hour and a half. I would say probably. But. So, anyways, I would say rainbow tables are definitely worth your time. Okay, so what does rainbow crack do? Well, it has three main functions I'm going to go over today. There, it does a couple other things, but the three that I found would be the most standard and most useful are uh, RTGen, which is used to generate a rainbow table, and there's a bunch of other parameters you can put on there that I'll show you, such as like what kind of your hashing algorithm, what kind of inputs you want, you know, stuff like that. Um, RT sorts, sorts the rainbow tables, obviously. Um, and for each one of these three um, functions, you have to pass in your rainbow table or set of rainbow tables. Um, so the, the interesting thing about the sort is it goes back to front standard. I don't, I don't know exactly what's the deal with that, but it's it said specifically that if you want it to go forward to backwards, you have to do it differently. But our crack, which is the the one that you're going to use, uh, worked fine going back to front. So I'm assuming that's that's the correct one. And that uses the rainbow table and a hash, or uses the rainbow table and a list of hashes, and provides you back with the plain text. So now I'm going to get into the example. Got to log in here. It closes out in like a minute. Okay, so this
right here. This is the RT gen. So you're going to do an MD5 hash because you can. That's where you put in whatever hashing algorithm you want. It knows a lot of them. And um, lower alphanumeric. So it's just going to do right here. The cars their char set is A B C D E F G all the way through Z and then zero through nine. And the plain text length range is one to five. So I ran that and took a really long time and gave me back uh, the rainbow table. So after you generate the rainbow table, the next thing you need to do right here is to sort it. So I did rainbow table sort, I did star.rte because I didn't want to type in this name, this is the only one I have in this directory, so it worked out. Uh, I guess I could have just hit like MD and then hit tab, but uh, just to start to do all of them because normally you'd want to sort them all at the same time even if you created them at different times it would make sense to sort all of them because sorting takes about a second and you have to sort them to be able to use them if you try to run the R crack without the RT sort it will not work so it sorted them by endpoint See right here it says use dash s to switch to sort uh, rainbow tables by start point. So you don't have to do that. Um, I don't know if it'll still work if you do, but it probably would as long as it's sorted in some way. So then there's the R crack. So you do R crack on your rainbow table, or this is pro extremely inefficient to try to do all rainbow tables because this hash is going to be specific to a rainbow table, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And then of your of your uh, this is this is a a hash that is stored in the rainbow table. So, and that's what that means. Dash h means that it's a hash. If you don't put a dash h, then it expects an input file. So you would say like hashes dot text or dot txt, and it would pull pull that and read line by line these types of things that are hashes. So it goes through, says it allocates the memory, searching for one hash, plain text, and then it says the, the plain text of my hash is hello. So all it was was hello in lowercase letters. So right here it says plain text found, one of one, total time 0.67 seconds. So if you tried to brute force this, it would have to run through all of the uh, lower alphanumeric things until it got to hello to figure it out and it would have taken probably 20 minutes to half an hour I mean it's a very simple one it wasn't a lot of letters and numbers mixed together so I'm assuming I don't know how, what the algorithm is but I'm assuming that would have been towards the beginning so it wouldn't have taken that long but obviously taking two thirds of, two -thirds of a second is extremely amazing and would be uh, much better than waiting nearly that long and so uh, it says number of alarm 128. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyways, so basically it tells you down here if you don't want to read all this other stuff, which doesn't particularly matter. It's just, just saying like how the search went and stuff. Um, if you look at the result, it says again what it said way up here in the middle of your in the middle of execution that there your hash and it's going to have a list of all of your hashes down here and this is the plain text and then this is the hex so it's a really really simple tool it takes about 10 seconds to learn but it's an extremely useful tool and i think that this kind of password cracking is fairly easy if they use a standard ha uh, hashing algorithm so i would recommend this tool highly to learn how to do this kind of thing. It's not the most advanced, but it's it's pretty solid. All right, uh, thanks for watching, and um, I guess I can't ask for questions because I'm recording this, but um, sorry for being sick today. I had, uh, that's really bugging me out. I was really like puking a bunch this morning and stuff, and I 
I've been sleeping like all day, so I'm sorry again I didn't submit this earlier. But here it is, and thank you for allowing me to submit it, not during class.